Well, first, Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Sup, Holmes? Beware! Your host, Jonathan Holmes! Hooray! Hooray for me! And you! Yay! And you! Austin! Yeah. How do I pronounce your last name, Austin? You just made funny face instead of talk. Is it Jorgensen or Jorgensen? Oh. Jor oh. Jorgensen. Jorgen? Jorgen. Was I muted that whole time or was I audible? What? <laughs> this what? is going to be a great show. I can We're tell. How it. are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fine. I'm adjusting my technology. There, I'm starting so late. A, uh, I got an echo going on here. I got an echo going on. Oh, that sounds good. I don't know if it's me. I bet. You might be you. Might not be. Uh -oh. We're gonna go with it. You're gonna I'm not gonna talk much. And therefore there won't be an echo. That's our way of curing technical problems, is just have the host shut up. Works every time. Uh Austin, tell yes. us about who you are. When who are you? Hold on, I got like <laughs> It's Dude. like it's overlapping what you're saying, and then it's like so. Like we were talking like 10, 20 seconds ago as you were talking just now. So interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Um, could have something to do with. Um, uh, do you have the Twitch window open with the channel somewhere I don't know. in a browser? Oh my god! Yeah, everybody, I am so sorry. That is absolutely what was wrong. <laughs> I had it open too. Okay. Uh. No. Hey. Back to back to normal though. All right. What What were you saying? <laughs> Jorgensen. Yes. Jorgensen. Yeah. Jorgensen. I picture. Yeah. Are you Swedish? Um. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm mainly Norwegian. I don't know. There's a lot going on. A lot of European stuff. I'm not sure what dominates, but I'm sure there's I'm some Swedish in there. Picture you. Or a video of you. I'm seeing a little bald man picture. A little what? There's a little avatar instead of you now. A little bald man with blue eyes. Uh, uh oh. It looks it's good. Uh oh. It might just be. Holds your now. internet sucks. <laughs> Get new okay. internet. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. No, oh, yeah, we're losing him. He's going to disconnect now. Oh no! No, I'm back. I'm I'm good, guys. <laughs> okay, that's debatable. Hey, hey how are you? <laughs> Great. Everything how are? Totally fine. Yeah. This is the perfect start. Literally, couldn't no. be better. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is about you and your RPG, Lisa the Painful RPG. Okay. Where things go terribly, terribly wrong, but people. Uh, apps. Yes. But Sorry? the player oh. keeps an upbeat attitude about it. Maybe. I don't do think they. so. Uh, yeah? Well, it's called the Painful RPG because the primary goal is to hurt the player. So the that's, video uh, game player? Yes, the video game player. Not physically coming out at you, but to just make you, like, it's, I don't know. I, I really want it to be a different experience. Just like you have movies that are upbeat and feel good, and then you have movies that make you feel terrible, but for whatever reason, you love them and you continue to watch them, so... That's kind of the, the, the angle for Lisa. Is to actually make the player feel terrible. More or less, yeah. yeah. Kind of but, hold, but the, hold the mirror up. Cute. It's yeah. cute and funny well, and quirky. Well, absolutely. And I think that you kind of, when you're doing stuff that's pretty dark, uh, if you want to make it kind of acceptable, you shouldn't have it be, you know, like South Park. Mm. They can get away with a lot of stuff because the packaging is so... You know, it's like a cartoony. It's kind of crude, so it, it they can do a lot of really darker things. Like if it was a, if South Park was live action, it'd be a terrible, god awful, disgusting show. But mm. it's a cartoon, so it's, it's fine. So yeah, um, I think you can get away with a lot darker things. Kind of like Earthbound. Yeah, well, I was gonna say, uh, Earthbound. We had the uh, translator localizer, uh, yeah. Malcolm Lindblom, on the show not that long ago. Yeah, I watched he, it. He pushed it right to the limit. He said with Earthbound, he. Uh, he wanted to suggest things, like you go to a, a, a clubhouse pretty early on in the game, 
Right. And a little boy says to Ness, I like you. No, I mean, I really like you. Right, it's like, yeah. I'm playing this right now in a video game, but it's just the word like. There's Absolutely. no way that parents could uh, sum up the, the collective rage on Nintendo for having little boys like each other. Yes. It's just the word like. You are... You're going way over that line. You've got guys selling their bodies, uh, both sexually and for food, from what I can gather. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm crossing it a bit too much there. No, uh, not leaving enough to the imagination. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of the direction it took, yeah. <laughs> Is it, uh, where, what inspired you to want to make a video game about a post-apocalyptic future where there are no women and the men without women around to... I'm not sure why, actually, that'll come from you, but without women, for some reason, the men seem to have lost any sort of sense of right and wrong, good or bad, acceptable yes. or unacceptable behavior, running completely hog-wild. Why? Do, what inspired you to do that? Okay, well, very early on, I just wanted to make, like, a game. There was it, All I wanted to do was do a River City Ransom-style beat-em-up in a post-apocalyptic world with, like, Fist of the North Star-type dudes. And that's all I wanted to do. There was no, whatever, darker core or anything. But then that was on the back burner for like a year. And the more I s didn't work on it and just thought about it, it slowly developed. And like, well, wait a minute. What is the world going to really be like if it is just a bunch of fists and North Star hunks running around and there are no ladies? And then, so like, then I started researching things like, uh, like prisons or, you know, just, just certain, er like, work areas in the world. You have, like, oil rigs and stuff where it's only men. And just, uh, I don't know, kind of the, the things that actually happen in those environments. So it, it really switched from just being about, like, oh, it'll be a bunch of cool dudes beating each other up to, like, what's, like, kind of the, the honesty of the situation. So it kind of developed in that way, just, just not actually working on it and just thinking about it. Huh. So do you feel like uh, in order to do... Justice to the idea, you have to make it more gross and troubling because that's honestly what you think would happen if it was all men in the world. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I just, I, you know, maybe it's just the fact that uh, I just have a dark mind if I let myself sit there with my own thoughts. I don't know, but it, it did just develop in like a, you know, now obviously it's kind of exaggerated, um, very exaggerated, but. You know, we can't deny things like in prison. You have, whether it's a gay man, straight man, whatever, you have people that once you're put in an environment for long enough, you kind of become a, a different person, and, and that's kind of where it, it stemmed from. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it's something that I think we see reflected in the Internet all the time. People who spend a lot of time on the Internet, sometimes only with people who share their interests, which might often be people of the same gender, yeah. end up having the standards for their behaviors really... A road after a while. I'll talk oh, to absolutely. Some in real life. I'll see them at PAX. I'll be like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And they'll be like, oh, I'm a really big fan of your work. It's great to meet you in real life, Jonathan Holmes. I'll be like, that is so touching. I'm such a nobody. The fact that you care about me at all is so great. Oh, oh. my God, life is so great. And then I'll go on the internet later and they'll be like, fuck you for not liking Pokemon. <laughs> you yeah, fucking oh, absolutely. Ass hat. Oh, that's. Ass I like, love what? it. Yeah, I love the internet for that reason alone. It's it's fantastic. It's it's great. See, you you really get an honesty, just just about how fucked up humans <laughs> humans are. What we really want to say and do, just destroy other people's things and just say whatever we want. So, I think there's a there's a beauty in it. I love the internet. <laughs> huh? That, and and you listen to the Dismal Gestures podcast, which has a lot of I, strange honesties and yes. a lot of uh, boundaries broken down in terms of behavior that could yeah. be considered acceptable, things that oh, are yeah. acceptable to say at all. You'd like it's, that show? Uh, let me tell you a secret, Jonathan Holmes. First of all, okay. Jonathan, every time I see you or think about you, I just think of Jim Sterling yelling your name. So. <laughs> You're not alone on that. There's thousands of people. That, uh, I call them Jim Personators. They're, they're all over the internet just wanting to be Jim Sterling to me, which allows me to meet a lot of interesting people. Right. Well, let me Twitter. tell you a secret. Yeah, let me tell you a secret. When I, every night before I go to bed, I listen. I I basically let you guys. Now, don't take this the wrong way. I let you guys lull me to sleep. I listen to the dismal gestures before I go to bed, and it helps me keep my mind off of the game or whatever, and just to kind of listen to you guys go on. So take that as the highest compliment. I love your guys' show. You're like 
in advance three stooges of the internet. It's amazing. The dynamic is is beautiful. It's it's that an art so what you guys do. It is a strange acquired taste that I think would have only uh, found an audience in this modern internet world of oh, 4chans yeah. and reddits and, oh, and people yeah. wanting to see how uh, dismal people can be. Yes. And then a game like Lisa comes along, you put it on Kickstarter, initially I was worried about it, but the, the, the support for it really swelled to the point yeah. where you ended up getting over 200% of your initial funding goal. Uh, what, what do you attribute that to? Why do you think Lisa ended up clicking with that many people? I... I honestly think there's something to be said about um, people. At least they they think they want to like know who they are. It's like, oh, I want him to push me. I want him to see how dark I am, or what what would I do in this terrible situation? You know, it's like why like zombie like the 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 Walking Dead is a good show. You just want to see how far people can plummet, and it's kind of putting the player in that position. How far am I going to plummet? And I mean, maybe that's kind of deep. And it, it, maybe the game just has a more surface appeal, but I just think that the darkness and kind of the universal appeal of it—I don't know. Yeah, that, that's certainly part of it. But like, it's, said, it's all the Earthbound every... bandwagon. It's just Earthbound bandwagons. Like, oh, it's not. A... <laughs> <laughs> it could be, and uh, yeah, it, hey, I'm okay with it. I feel like it found more people when when folks like Adam Tierney. Uh, yeah, way forward yeah, started awesome. backing it, and uh, but at the same token, from what I've gathered, you've been a part of the uh, game development community for a little bit, and there was another game called yeah. Lisa the First, which yes. has its own set of diehard fans. Uh, yeah, what, is Lisa the Painful RPG a sequel to Lisa the First? Or is there any relation there? Is there a reason why they share the same name and some of the same uh, feelings anyway? Yes, there there is a connection. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I'd call it a sequel, but there there is some relations involved. So yeah. Well, let's so start with cool. these. Huh? Sorry, I, I was just gonna say it'd be, it'll be cool for people that have played the first one. Hopefully, they'll kind of get a a fuller experience by playing this game. Well, let's start with the first one. Uh, what is okay. Lisa the First about? Which is available uh, now. Uh, people can download it as we speak. What is Lisa the First? Um, to put it lightly, it is just about a young girl trying to cope with the life she's given. Huh, <laughs> That's about all I can say about that, yeah. <laughs> and that involves a man with a comb over and sunglasses. Yes, yes. Being uh, around a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very surreal game. It, it can kind of be uh, thought of that it's it's taking place kind of in her mind, more hmm. or less. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Um, it's been compared to Yumi Nikki, which is a interesting indie game uh, yeah. from Japan. It's, it's basically a Yumi Nikki ripoff, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I thought uh, um, Yumi Nikki, great game, but doesn't even feign at trying to be entertaining in any way, in my opinion. Sure. No, um, I, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas uh, Lisa the First definitely... It felt like you were excited to freak me out and make me feel weird, and you did. Yeah. Um, well, the truth of the matter is, is that that game came from. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I. I was uh, in like a. Uh, I had a girlfriend, and we broke up. Whatever. That's. <laughs> I don't know how, how much I should tell. That's to uh, tell it all. You had okay. a girlfriend. Yeah. You broke up. Yeah. Then what happened? Uh, so here's the thing. The game is is about um, issues that happen in your life, and she had she had a, a a bad relationship with her father, and no matter what, it always came up in our relationship. Just just somehow it would seep in, like the the sludge of that terrible guy would sleep, seep in our relationship, and it just got me thinking, like, man, no matter what I do, no matter what happens, this is something that's going to stick with her. So that's kind of the inspiration of Lisa. So it wasn't like a hateful, like, oh, we broke up, fuck you, I'm going to make a game. No, but it just came from like, man, sometimes there's things in people's life that just happen, and that sucks. And so that's kind of where that game came from. It's, it's about a girl. And people criticize the ending because it's not really a happy ending. It's just like the game goes, 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 and then, oh, it doesn't really resolve itself, you know? So that's kind of where that came from is, is a, a feeling of like, man, sometimes there's stuff that happens, and... There is no happy arc ending, so that's kind of that's basically the summary of, of that game. 
huh. And people criticize it because they wanted it to have a more solid, definitive resolution? I think just, you, you know, you kind of take away from it like, man, this girl's life sucks. And that's it. There's, there is no, <laughs> you know, there's no like, oh, well, you know. But she forgives them. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. It just it just really is a, a miserable kind of thing. And, oddly enough, as if I would learn my lesson, no, Lisa, uh, my current game, is going to maybe kind of follow in those kind of footsteps with more of a Hollywood, I don't know. It, it, it'll, it'll still kind of be a painful game, though. That's the idea. <laughs> what, uh, what motivates you to want to cause pain? And express these uh, kind of nauseating, terrible right. truths in a appealing, sugary. On the surface, they look sweet. Like, oh, haha, ha, that looks funny. Little graphics yeah. there, and a little, little kid running around, <laughs> and then you play it, you're like, ah. You just yeah. like, injected Cronenberg into my veins. I feel ridiculously <laughs> gross. Uh, but then you want to keep playing to find out what happens next. What do, what do you think motivates you to use? video games to do that. I have to tell you, I mean, I know I keep bringing this up, and this is like a thing that revolves, but man, Earthbound, that game, not only is that like just a game that I love as a game, but I swear to God, that game shaped just the way I view everything in general. The Like like you're saying, it's, it's, it's wholesome on the surface, but there's certain things you can dig under, and it's like, whoa, this is adult, you know? This is, it's crazy. And just, I really love that kind of Candy coated shit, or like I don't know, candy coated darkness or whatever, mm. and and just that element has has resonated in me. And every time I see a movie or watch a game, or, or sorry, sorry, play a game, uh, it just like I really look for those kind of elements, and you don't find it as much. But I think there's like a, a mystery and a lore to that kind of stuff that's just like it's very fascinating to me. So sure. that's kind of what I want to capture. Yeah. Yeah, and and for whatever reason the kind of uh, underground RPG community seems to have really embraced it. Um, yeah, I think so. A lot of games just make you feel troubled. Do um, you think RPG is particularly skilled at making the player feel troubled? Like just role-playing games in general? or? Yeah, yeah. I, I have an opinion about it compared to like an action game, which might be a little bit too uh, exhilarating to inspire you know... too much contemplation. I think I maybe would say RPG just because they're story-driven games. And I think if there's no, no matter how uh, foreboding or mysterious or hard to understand it is, if there's no story or lore behind it, no history, then I don't think you can get that kind of feeling. Like, I think the best example in recent years is Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. you just There's certain things where, yeah, I guess it's kind of an action game, but... It just really it has those elements of of discovery and exploration and uh, I like to say Zelda's that way too, but I don't know how I feel about that anymore. So I think Dark mm -hmm. Souls really kind of nails that that mystery and exploration aspect. So. And the dread, the, yes, the, the, the pacing of Dark Souls lends itself to oh, it's giving the player enough time to really think, like, oh no, yeah, what's gonna yeah. be here? Yeah, I'm so screwed, Dad. It's great. Sorry. I mean, yeah, they, they use their assets, their their uh, you know characters, monsters, whatever. It's not just like, well, here's thirty thugs, beat them. There's the boss, beat him. Another thirty thugs that are red this time instead of blue. It's it's like they're they're using their characters and stuff as set pieces. So it's it's great because you see somebody's like, oh, well, what's this guy doing here? It's not just like, oh, there's the thug doing his little fighting animation until I run up to him and then beat him. You, you, you're nervous to go interact with new things and new people, and, and that's an amazing, I think a really amazing thing that it captures. Do you think uh, Lisa will end up carrying that along? Do you, do you anticipate the player being nervous when I have to uh, meet a new character and hope that they don't want to murder me and or eat me or have death with yes. me? Yeah, that is absolutely the goal. I, I want there to be an element of trust, and it's not just like, well, I can talk to every NPC, or like, that guy's obviously a bad guy because he moves like this. You know, I, I, I really do want it to be like, you have no clue what you're going to get to. You know, I, I love in games that people just always have to collect all of this, get all of that, but Lisa, I really want to break that and make it like, fuck, I can't talk to this guy right now because I'm low on health or whatever. I don't know if I can complete this. And just... The structure of the game itself, I want it to be you cannot really 100% this game unless you 
care that much, but I hope you don't you won't you won't put that much effort into it. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you imagine people playing Lisa once, twice, or, or endlessly? Do you think it's something that's going to sit with people for a while, or or I guess it would depend on the person? But what are you? Yeah. What are you, what is your best guess uh, going forward with that? Just the the structure of the game. Um, it's not very linear, so you can miss a lot of things, and you can beat the game without ever meeting these certain people or beat the game without ever uh, gaining this bit of story. But with that said, I really kind of just want you to play it once, you know? Like, if you make a mistake, I would hope that, you know, unlike an you know, Animal Crossing, you're like, oh, fuck, my, my furniture, I fucked that, I better restart the game. Uh, I think that's kind of unavoidable, just given the nature of games, but... um. Yeah, I mean, I would hope that I, uh, my the story I want to tell is completed in one playthrough. Now, if you want to see all the other characters and stuff, that's fine. But it's kind of a yeah, you play it once, and it's like okay, great. But you absolutely can go through and learn more information and 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 stuff like that. So, huh? Yeah, yeah. My my best guess is that people are gonna play it a bunch. Nobody wants cool. to just get a little bit of what the developer had in mind. They're gonna wanna. Right. Out every last bit of it, but um, depending on how you design it, you may end up making it so it's very, very hard to see everything, which is oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, there, it's going to be riddled. I mean, it's it's going to be like Zelda times a hundred, and it's not just like oh, there's bombs in there and there's rupees in that one. It was really hard to get to, but there's still a cool rupee treasure. No, it's it's going to be things are everything is basically going to be hidden, and sometimes very important things will be hidden too. So it's I I, I want there to be a that Zelda exploration, but with, like, real incentive. So it's not just like, oh, I spent five minutes doing this crazy puzzle and found the secret, and you get, like, you know, 100 bucks. Mm. I, I want there to, you to really, if you dig deep, you can find some really interesting stuff. That's that's my goal. Huh. What kind yeah. of, are you planning on the rewards being more lore, more characters, more information? Everything. As well as, huh. And yeah. I'm guessing that a lot of the times I'll just be desperate to find something that will permit me to keep playing so I can finish the game because I expect to die a lot in this game or to have characters die and, and never come back. The yeah. that thing is something I'm, I'm looking forward to. So uh, is that going to be used to kind of motivate me to, to try even harder or is it going to be something that I'm going to end up feeling is so inevitable that I'll just hate myself and, and my life? <laughs> Turn it off. No, um, it's it's something I'm I'm working with the balance, finding a good balance. Um, I at this moment it hasn't. I I don't really see it as being unforgiving in a sense of you're gonna have to keep dying and redoing the same spot over and over. Mm. But I, and it and and that's hard to to kind of find a balance. But um, yeah, it's it's that's still something that's up in the air to be gotcha. honest. Yeah. So for people who don't know, uh, and they could check it out right now, there is a, a demo that you can download. Uh, yes. I believe it's still on the Kickstarter page and, and other yes. places. Uh, it's got elements of kind of 2D exploration, but um, the, the battles are, are turn-based. Yes. Jeez, I hope I know what I'm talking about. This is all true, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I I'm <laughs> know what I'm talking about a little bit. Yeah, no, I'm kind of slightly revamping the battle system, but I absolutely still want it to be you're on this side, the bad guy's on that side, and you're, you know, very very traditional uh, RPG elements. Just huh. because, yeah, I, I mean, I'm telling you, I keep going back to it, but Earthbound, um, it just gives you, you're sitting there watching these characters, the the enemy, and, and you just read things at the top of the screen, like, oh, so-and-so fell down, and so they lose a couple turns, and it just, it cracks me up, and I love how vulnerable they make all their people, and, and I just think putting it in that type of uh, RPG battle system lets you portray that kind of thing. Almost a sadness. <laughs> you feel bad for your enemies. And <laughs> yeah, sort of it's thing. interesting. Uh, by making it a, a part narrative, like uh, to me, turn-based battle is the, the, the meeting point between video game interactivity and, and text, yes. just, just reading. So Absolutely, by reading yeah. about the characters, as you're fighting them, you kind of contemplate them. And it's also, to me, a turn-based battle is a metaphor for a conversation. And uh, most of the battles we have in real life, at least the ones I have, are, are purely metaphorical battles in conversation, be they be in real life or on Twitter. And, um, you know, when you're feeling a desperate 
sense to win against someone and all you have is your your plan for what you're going to say next or do next, uh, it can be pretty terrifying to not be able to rely on your physicality like you would in an action game. You really have to think it through and you have a limit to exactly what you can say and do and uh, there's a powerlessness to the turn-based battle that reminds me of being ill-equipped to talk to another human being properly, which happens more often than I'd like to admit. I never talk quite as good as I want to, but maybe I think about that too much. Um, I was going to ask about the amount of homosexuality in your video game. <laughs> oh, no, we lost him. Did we lose me? I was going to talk about homosexuality. No, we, we've still got you, at least. Oh, that's good. It's one of those days. Yeah, my face looks really weird today. Oh well, what can you do? Can't get a new face unless you uh, pay for it. It's expensive. I guess we'll try to get that guy back. How can I help do that? Uh, just sit and be charming, and I'll see what I can do. I will do that. I was going to ask Austin about the fact that with no women, and he alluded to this earlier, kind of taking a prison planet, an all-male prison planet approach to the scenario in his game, whether he had to think, at least consider, how what he was saying with this game was going to reflect on his attitudes towards homosexuality in general. Because there's a character in the game, I think his name is Bruce Gaywood? Something spotty Gaywood, maybe? And some people I know were immediately off put and offended because it sounds like it's a, a slur or a derogatory or at least kind of a haha being gay is funny uh, remark but then in actually playing the game it doesn't come across that way as much to me but I wondered what his intention was so that's what I'm gonna ask him when I come back remind me to actually ask that because now that I've said it all I might forget it uh, once it escapes the brain you don't have it in there to use again necessarily I'll probably never ask it that good again, either. Probably it's not. It's, it's probably all over now. And besides, <laughs> the audience has already heard it once. So yeah, I know. The audience is already so all over, over again. The second time. Those poor people watching this show. Poor Trying suffering to... fools. <laughs> I love them. We I do. I guess I could use this time to tweet that the show is still going on. So people know. Uh... Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Thanks to Foster. He tweeted it. He's got a little Hantaro avatar. It's adorable. He knows how to mix cute with troubling. He favorited the tweet. Thanks, Foster. Still going. I'll tweet with one hand. Sort of. I'm holding my internet in place with the other hand. Sort of going, sans guest. <laughs> uh, guest... Died? Uh, I hope not. Question mark. I hope no, so. I got I got an email from him. He said he's still alive, apparently. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's. I don't know what's going on over on his end that he's not able to reconnect, but oh, but he's alive. Say... We, we can confirm Austin Jorgensen is still alive. Okay. Yeah, you know, this is two weeks that. in a row where we've had doubt over whether or not our guests survived the show. <laughs> And I was worried you thought I was dead because it took me so long to get back. Uh, technology is so unpredictable. Uh, yeah, but hopefully, I kind, of, I kind of expect it from you. At this you point. do. I don't. Yeah. Sometimes my technology is so great. It's like <laughs> the best sometimes. Uh, confirmed that Lisa is still alive. <laughs> That's good. So, yeah, okay, yeah, so Adam Tierney, who, you know, just loves pouring salt in wounds, but we won't talk about that. Um, Adam Tierney <laughs> from Way Forward is asking what you're hoping to see your experience in the in the final Lisa game. Who, me? Yeah, who you? You, you specifically. What are you, Jonathan Holmes? Yes. Hoping to hoping see your experience, to... yeah. I that Hoping that I'll get out of, out of Lisa... Well, I'm hoping that it makes me laugh. I think that it will. And I, I'm particularly selfishly excited just to see all the art that Austin came up with. We haven't talked about that yet because 
we hadn't gotten to it. It was going pretty smooth. We were really, really well. Until then. Yeah, yeah, Austin's doing all the art for the game, as far as I can tell. And that is impressive. Pixel art style is very similar to that of Brownie Brown's art in Mother 3, which I like a lot. Though he's pushing it a little bit farther. The heads are a little bit bigger, which allow for even more range in character design and expression there. So, so selfishly, because I love that kind of artwork, I just want to see what he thought of. I think he takes that stuff for granted at this point. He doesn't seem to see how great that is, which happens to a lot of visual artists, I know. Uh, in terms of how it feels, I'm really wanting to get an idea of what Austin thinks of who men really are and who people really are. And sounds like that was his motivation, so that was good to hear. And I'm expecting he's thinking some pretty terrible things about who human beings really are underneath all the trappings of society and manners and well-behaved actions. Because it's men behaving badly in the game, more or less. They're such jerks. They eat each other. They never eat another guy. People are probably pretty delicious. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not like endorsing cannibalism or anything like that. But when you think about it, we're a lot of uh, lean muscle. Mm. You know? Sure. We're probably pretty nutritious. <laughs> I've gotten a tweet from Austin saying, "Google us an asshole." Be yeah. Back soon. All right. Yeah, he he said Google was being a butt. Uh, yeah. So, so yes, yeah, still alive. We can still confirm the continued living existence of Austin Jorgens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's something we have got going for us. My hand is getting so hot. I don't know how hot it sounds where I am, but I'm trying to keep the fan. Well, from it, my cer- computer. it certainly sounds high pitched. Yeah, it would be even worse <laughs> if I moved my hand in this giant sweatshirt I have covering that part. Maybe this week I'll remember to try and edit that out of the audio. But oh, yeah, not. that could be good. Noise removal program. They're pretty neat. Die. Jeez, when it comes to time-killing chat, I'm out of things. Are you? Maybe. Well, I can talk with you, Conrad. Yeah, we I could talk. This is a conversation instead we of a could, monologue. We, we could talk about things. Yeah, we could. You're in the game too, Conrad. I, I am in the game. My mustache is even more ridiculously awesome in the game than it is in real life. Well, it ties up with your hair, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes all the way up into a bun on the top of my hair. It it, it <laughs> makes me quite happy. I was I worried haven't... that yeah. I haven't had enough hair to have a bun in about a decade, so that's exciting for me. <laughs> yeah, um, the depictions of all three of us from the Dismal Jesters thing turned out exceptionally well. Initially, Austin made you the tallest, Jim, I think, the shortest, so I asked him to switch that, and it felt kind of weird because I had never met him, and I was shocked he was suddenly putting us in the game. This was not just to get promotion from us. I think we'd already talked about the game and how we were interested in it, yeah. Jim and I, um, and you potentially too. But yeah, he just likes uh, he likes our podcast enough to do that, and it was touched. Uh, apparently, Adam Tierney and Austin Ivensmith are both in it also. Oh, cool. From way forward, huh. which is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. That um, doesn't surprise me too much. Uh, it's good to hear, though. They're big supporters. Over at Way Forward. Hey, oh, look who's back! Oh, good. He dingled in. He dingled in. Oh, he's really Dingle in. Dingle it, girl. God damn it! You and that song. It is. Oh. Uh, Austin, so good to have you back. Oh, hi, hello, and sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. Have you ever met Max Scoville, Austin? No. You were getting that vibe too then. I'm not the only one who thought, wow, Austin reminds me a lot of Max Scoville. Yeah, you're like a, a blonde uh, leopard print game developing Max Scoville in some sounds, ways. Sounds like a great guy. Yeah, he's, he's a super guy. <laughs> uh, more about your background, Austin, and then okay. hopefully I'll get back to remembering the questions. But the way this show is going, I want to make sure people get to know you 100%. Oh, okay. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Austin. Can you move that mic? Sorry, guys. Yeah, Sorry yeah, for no, that. Right. <laughs> Serial killer breathing. <laughs> so, you, from what I've read about you, yeah. you are a martial artist yes. that was inspired in part by uh, beat-em-ups of the 16-bit era. Hell, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Which? Uh, tell me how that connection worked. How um, you were able to link uh, Streets of Rage to getting in real life fight situations. Yeah, I uh, loved Streets of Rage as a kid, and I don't know, you know, it's just one of those things where you see something like, oh my god, I want to be that guy, and um, it wasn't even any of the main characters, there was just some, like, random scrolling enemy, and he was like a kickboxer, I was like, that guy looks so cool, I want to look like that guy, and then so I got involved, well, I tried to get involved in kickboxing, but uh, where I live, that just wasn't a thing, and then I did, like, Taekwondo, and then it snowballed, and so now I do Chinese Wushu, which is, like, uh, Jet Li actually did that. That's what I don't know if he does it so much on screen, but it's 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 a performance martial art based in Chinese kung fu. So that's where I'm at now. Whoa! Do you uh, get paid to do it? Uh yes and no. I am sponsored by Paul Mitchell Hair Care. I know that like why the hell would Paul Mitchell? I don't know. But Paul Mitchell Hair Care sponsors a lot of martial arts tournaments, so they they only pay for me to fly. To the locations, the the tournament locations. Um, basically, my income is based off of if I win the tournament or not, and it's judged. I guess you could. The, the closest thing I could think of is like ice skating or uh, like gymnastics. You do a routine, and then you get judged based off like difficulty, style, uh, you know, technique, that sort of thing. And then you know, if I win, I win some money. If I lose, I go home, and that's that. Huh. So you have been rolling the dice when it comes to performing <laughs> in a public space and maybe getting physically hurt for a while now, it sounds like. Absolutely. And I've been pretty fortunate. I have a, a pretty bad back, uh, messed up ankle. Um, but aside from that, yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. And, and it, aside from that, it is just rolling the dice of like, man, am I going to go home with no money and life's going to suck or am I going to you know, be okay for a little while? So, yeah. Huh. It's a stressful environment for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's a stress that I couldn't help but guess is carrying over into Lisa because you're putting oh. the player in a situation where we're uh, screwed potentially in every situation. Yeah. You're constantly rolling the dice, it seems like, in, in the game that you're making. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what do you think drew you to taking these kinds of risks in general uh, with game development, with competitive uh, martial arts, uh, th these are all things a lot of people just wouldn't have the guts to even give a shot at, I think. What, right. what, what makes you interested, um, able to tolerate that kind of thing? Well, I can't really say why I am that way, but I am just an extremely passionate person, and if I like something a lot or love something, I really want to excel in it. Um, so martial arts, that was kind of my one of my first passions. I, I mean, I've always loved video games, but I just never really, you know, thought about making video games. Uh, but yeah, so I, I just, I guess, and doing martial arts, especially uh, Chinese wushu, it's, it's, I think it's kind of given me thick skin because being a tall, lanky white kid doing, uh, you know, Chinese martial arts, it's just, I've been, I've been put down a lot. And I sucked for a really long time. I still suck now, but I'm at least okay enough to win every once in a while. But I just think I, I've, I'm almost jaded to a lot of, like, He suddenly became quiet. I uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to take you. I can't hear you now. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Oh, it's like all right. I'm just that. rambling. That's nothing important anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, exactly. I was uh, enthralled. So, facing the adversity and and going yes. for it, regardless of what you think your chances are, is something that's kind of been in your attitude towards life for a while. It sounds like. Abs yeah, it it definitely was developed through martial arts, and I carried over. Cause I mean, truth be told. Uh, I'm sure it's no secret. It's the game's made on RPG Maker, and that's like, oh, RPG Maker games suck, and it's it's kind of true. Uh, but there's a couple of exceptions, and it's it's what I know, and uh, yeah. So so again, just weeding through all the the shit about you suck, you can't do it, you'll never make it, blah blah blah, and and just like, no, that's all right, I'll I'll go ahead and try, and you know, so here we are now. Yeah, so, hey, absolutely. That's a lesson for you guys. No, uh, just you know. <laughs> Well, it absolutely is. I think that people who, a lot of younger people I meet right. on the internet, uh, right. will s uh, just kind of have it be a default schema in the back of their head. By schema, I mean just kind of understanding of the truth about the world, which is that 
it's a big popularity contest, and everything you're doing is to try to win people over or gain their acceptance, and they'll look at stuff I do, and a lot of the stuff I do, uh, people really, really hate. Like, a lot of people will hate it oh. a lot. And they'll say, well, you're going to quit, obviously, right? Because you yeah. just enraged thousands of people. And like, oh, ah, yeah. that's too bad they didn't like it. Maybe they'll like the next one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. As long as I have yeah. the opportunity to do stuff, I'm going to keep trying. Uh, Absolutely. And then, luckily for me, a lot of the people actually like stuff that I do uh, every once in a while. But you have had some some backlash against the fact that Lisa is uh, made an RPG maker. So you've had to face that kind of... Hmm, Elitism. I'm gonna call it yeah. uh, elitism uh, around the kind of developer clicks and uh, what is acceptable in terms of being like a real developer. How's it been to face that already? So uh, in your development. I mean, I knew, I knew going into this that it was gonna happen, so it doesn't bother me at all. It's, it's just, I just hope that I can show you something else. I don't want to say prove you wrong, but I just hope that I can show you that it's not. You know, it's it's not the tools, it's the artist. It's not the paintbrush, it's not the canvas. It's what you do with it, you know? So that's kind of my, my goal with that. And hopefully inspire some of these other guys that do these RPG Maker games to be like, hey, you know what? Fuck this. We can do this. Let's let's get a team together or whatever and, and you know, try to do something. So Absolutely, and your Kickstarter success is already hopefully inspiring to people. But uh, yeah, Sinistar so. is sending a text. Saying okay, no, hey. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you good now, too. Um, oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm going to ask you a potentially... This is a tough one. You're going to want to think this out. Don't want to incriminate <laughs> myself? Well, there are certain subjects that... Hey, even okay. People Here I know who are thinking, like, the best things ever, like the most uh, good-natured, uh, well-intended things, because the mind and the, the oh, mouth absolutely. are not always in perfect unison. They'll say something that'll come out a little bit different than they meant it. And I'm really good at that, by the way. So I <laughs> let's just put it out there now. I will make an ass of myself. So let's just go ahead. <laughs> let's go for it. Um, some people I know mm -hmm. were immediately on guard around the way homosexuality yeah. is yes. uh, shown in Lisa. They were like, "Is he making fun of gay people?" Because there are gay people, or at least guys uh, having sex with guys, guys yeah. seducing guys. Um, there's a, uh, I think a, a character class just called the pervert, if I'm not incorrect. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're gonna have sex with a guy. They, they might. I don't know. <laughs> um. <laughs> so was that? Uh, I, I wanted to ask because uh, I was just personally curious. What are you saying about homosexuality, if anything, with with Lisa? Um, well, with any touchy subject, I think the only way to get over things is to just ram it head on. So, I'm not... Alright, okay, my number one uh, goal is to try not to make a statement. Mm -hmm. I don't want to preach to anybody. I don't want to say, hey, gay guys are great, or hey, I hate gays. No, I don't want to say anything. I just want to show you a world where all of these things are present. There is homophobia in Lisa, and then there is also just in you know in, in honesty in in people that are like, hey, no, just like you know, fuck off, it's not a big deal, whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, I, it's it's definitely an element that is there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, from what I can tell, if there is any universal uh, yeah or unifying theme in Lisa, it's that these are people. Whom aren't thinking? Well, I got to do this in order to fit in and impress, yeah. uh, oh, you know, the boss. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, thrown I mean, out that's... the window. So if that were to be thrown out the window, you would have some people who could just openly uh, be sexual in the way that feels most naturally to them, and uh, th that would just be a part of uh -oh. that world. You've turned into a robot. I did. A little bit. Okay, you're back. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> I was just uh, kind of reiterating my, my current idea of what uh, Lisa says about uh, homosexuality, which is it's part of this larger world where the rules and the, the society structures are gone in general. And that has to do with not only morality, but it has to do with just social mores that have nothing to do with whether yeah. you're actually um, a moral person or not. So, so right. all the well, rules are gone. Yeah, you're a very... 
intelligent man. Uh, I know you you astute to the human scene, right? You know. Uh, <laughs> um, but know. just uh, you know, psychologically, behavioral, whatever, sex is a huge driving force for all humans, and uh, some people oh, are uh, you know kind of are, are turned off by that concept, and and you know some uh whatever, but um. Yeah, it's sexuality is a huge part of Lisa, and I just I'm not gonna shy away from one side or the other because someone's feelings might get hurt, or it could turn into something hateful. I don't. I mean, I'm kind of playing with all of these elements, and I think sometimes you gotta put yourself out there and. Oh no! Can't believe we lost him. I was preparing my next question so good too. This is really going well, I have to say. <laughs> it's a very perfect for for this uh, particular game we're talking about, I think. Because it's a world where things have gone wrong. Sup, Holmes, the painful RPG podcast. <laughs> You're quick with a joke. Kind of light with my smoke. <clears throat> There's some place that I'd rather be. I'd be doing the show with some good computers someday. Duh. So I guess... Well, we're I am gonna... not getting you your drinks for free under any circumstances. <laughs> All right, let's Fair just enough. be clear on that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't get to ask him about the graphics yet. I, I, had is... a, I had a friend in high school. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. And oh, it's, please but, do. But I had a friend in high school who dated a guy named Davey who joined the Navy, and I always asked if he probably would be there for life. So they lived the dream. They lived yeah, the yeah, he was he was living the dream. Huh, good for him, <laughs> Dayton Davey. Uh, I was going to ask Austin if he'd been if he'd visited any all girls colleges, and I think we've talked about this before, Conrad, because his concepts of what a unigender world would be like, um, omni omnigender, unigender. Um, they they play out in in all girls schools as well, uh, up at Wellesley College here in Massachusetts. I saw some boundary breaking and some hmm, what's the word for gender fluidity? Nah, it's not quite right. I think I've told have I told you about this before, Conrad, about the all girl rugby team? I don't think you have. I am curious to know more. Well <sighs> interesting to me anyway. I was uh you remember that picture of me that Jim Sterling has to, to use to, to masturbate, maybe. Oh, okay. sure, the the one where you're really muscular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you got those washboard abs. It looks like you're in a hot tub. Mm, yeah, I think I was just in a living room, like, being weird, um, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so it was around that time, and I was dating a girl at Wellesley College named Greer, who ended up trying to use voodoo to kill her ex-boyfriend, and she was cheating on me with uh, another girl, so that didn't work out. Uh, she was really nice, though, for the most part. Uh, she invited me up to a party at Wellesley College, and I was up there, and it was in the summer, and it was really hot, and I was outside, and I thought, oh, um, you know, I can take my shirt off, I guess. But the all-girls uh, rugby team was revolted and disgusted and very angry that I would take off my shirt because it was like a sign of something, a sign of trying to... Male dominance? Off. I'm not sure, but they would sexually objectify women oh. who are not on the team. Like you wouldn't believe, Austin, you're back. I think I'm st oh, okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The fingers were great. Yeah, you were like magicking yourself into our reality. So thank you. Oh, I think like the NSA or something's trying to hush our conversation. We're we're getting too revolutionary here. We gotta knock it off. <laughs> I was talking about uh, Wellesley College and how at Wellesley College. The all uh, girls rugby team took on the persona of kind of your typical uh, frat boy bro dude. Uh, the, that was their social structure. That was their norm at that point. They, they were like, huh? Now you're quiet as a mouse. Oh, hello. Talky talk for me. Oh, no. I had you for just a second there, Austin. Hello? Now I got you. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Now you're back. Yeah. You're okay. Oh. 
It's telling me because I've participated so many different times that my my mic is muted by default. So oh sorry. yeah, that does that to me too. Uh, yeah. So I'm sorry. What were you saying? What did we miss? I was just curious if if it was like an experiment or if it's just actually what happened. Uh, oh yeah, just, just actually what happened. I would. Right. Uh, Wellesley yeah. College was a treat, and I, I uh, if you want to come up to Massachusetts, uh, feel free to s sleep on my couch for a few days and just tour Wellesley College and get a taste for the culture. Right. Because with just one um, sex there, you know, the the it's all yeah. women. The gender shifts, and some of the women take on these very uh, male, uh, typically male yeah. um, attitudes. Uh, right. Social style, social standards, really sexually objectifying. Just be like, oh, I want to tap that ass uh, about the sure. women who were not on the team. Like the intellectual women became yeah. like the women, and uh, they became like the men. And and seeing me there, they were they were kind of dinks to me. Um, and and on uh, the other token, I was up there hanging around watching Grease too, and just waiting for my date to come back. And a girl comes up into the room and is like, hey. You want to hang out? Uh-oh. Like, now I'm with somebody else. They're like, I don't care. Get in my room. Right. Um, Get in my room now. <laughs> like, yeah. Kid, that would be rude. But it was like heaven for me. Like sure. women being as sexually aggressive as men, I was like, Absolutely. can I move in? That yeah. would be the best. Uh, right. This is when I was young. I was a young 20-year-old punk. So right. my life was different then. Uh, but anyway, enough mm -hmm. out of me. Yeah. That was what I was babbling on. While you missed, feel free to comment on it, and if not, well, I would bring up something else. You know, another thing too, that mm -hmm. kind of doesn't uh, people don't think about or realize, in a situation where there's only men, or vice versa. Uh, well, I guess okay for only men is, you know, women have the amazing power of motherhood and maternity and giving mm -hmm. life. So that's one thing that yeah, it's like oh, there's no women to have sex with. This sucks. No, there's also no. Uh, you know that that maternal love or anything like that that is just so vital in human structure. So sure, sure, that's, sure. I mean that's that's just one of the way one other thing to think about. You know, well, I imagine not... some of the men would naturally take on those roles eventually. Absolutely, but, but maybe yeah. not in the same way. Um, there's a really good episode of the Alfred Hitchcock Hour. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to research it later. But it is about a woman that lives in a society that's all women, and uh -huh. women just have biologically uh, evolved so they can procreate without men. And right. it's also kind of a, a interesting nightmarish scenario. Absolutely. Um, and The Last of Us was originally, or yeah. one of the original ideas, maybe mm -hmm. I think it was like well, the third out of like five or six concepts they had, it was going to be only women were, sorry microphone, only women were infected, so pretty much it was a, a male-only world. Right. Um, uh, what 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 do you what do you think of the fact that they shied away from that? The oh, I, the last I mean, uh, it's probably the best move. You know, it's probably smart uh, financially and that sort of thing. But they're, you know, AAA whatever. They got a lot of uh, investment involved. Whereas mm -hmm. indie developers, there's you know, there's not a lot going on here, so we can do and say whatever we want, really, with with no, <laughs> uh, whatever boundaries. So yeah, yeah I, I, sure. I'm sure. But, you know, it's the kind of thing where they thought about it. And then, mm. you know, maybe five years down the road, yeah, there will be something like that. Or maybe not even five years, but exploring just different ideas and things. So, Do you think yeah. that is – are you actively trying to exercise the freedom you have to potentially offend people? Uh, maybe not intentionally, but to know that it's okay if people get offended by what you do. Uh Financially, this isn't something that you, you know, you don't have a, a, a team of 200 people working on your game, so they're all gonna end up destitute because too many people are offended by Lisa. Right. Yeah. No, just me. That's okay. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm try like actively like, well, here's my game plan. I really want to piss people off. No. Um. Well, yes and no. I don't know. It's it's just it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to cause them pain, which is a really right. interesting... It's different, yeah. Yeah, but you, you at the same token, there seems uh -huh. to be plenty about the game that shows how much you cared about the craft. You, you I think your sprite eye work is, is amazing. Like, oh, kind wow. Of, I, I don't mean to um, belittle the overall message of Lisa or the ideas, but if you were just like, 
I'm making a game about guys eating pizza in the living room. You get up, you make the pizza, and then you sit down and eat the pizza. I'd be like, right. well, if it looks like that, I'm playing it. Sure. I love those little guys. I just want to hang out with them and eat pizza. Like, oh, I, great. I honestly, yeah. yeah, the graphics themselves uh, had me sold at a pretty early stage. Uh, well, that's so, fantastic, because I thought they were terrible early on, and then it's like, oh, people like this? All right, great. Okay, maybe we have something here. <laughs> no, no, no. What, uh, what were some of the um, sprite art influences you might have had? Uh, was there any other game that you thought, well, the look of that is something I think I can take yeah. on and maybe make my own? Um, in terms of, like, color, I... I Earthbound, oh, okay. Well, let's get it out of the way. But, um, The Wind Waker. Uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker... The I love the the simplicity of it. I mean, you know, my my favorite thing about sprite art, even when I was a little kid, is that you're you have maybe you know a, a five by five square or whatever, and you have to convey a human being in that, or you have to convey sadness in that limited space, or happiness, and that really drew me in. Is is you know it's like film back in the day. You had to be way more creative because you had less resources. Same thing with sprite mm -hmm. art. You have to really be more creative with what you do to convey uh, the feeling you want to give. And I don't know, I just really love that idea of it. So, yeah, absolutely. Did nice. you play Mother 3 as well? Oh, oh gosh. Uh, yeah, I, I did. And I'm, I'm like, kind of off and on replaying it right now. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah, the, the sprite work they did, I think, was uh, phenomenal. And yeah. that was one of the other first things I thought when I saw Lisa, was like, it's kind of like Mad Gypsy's The Game tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I those really are awesome understand. characters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they, there's rumor that that's part of the reason why Nintendo really shied away from bringing Mother 3 here is that... Uh, I didn't even think about that, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that, yeah. I don't know if we have any questions. If we do, we should do them because I don't know if we're going to go late, but I think we have a show that goes on relatively sure. soon after, yeah. so we might not be able to. Uh, so if the questions come in, great. If not... Okay. I can just talk to you more about other stuff. Um, have we gotten your full game uh, biography down? Because I only found uh, Lisa the First and Lisa the Painful RPG. There yeah, no, that's it. That's, that's all I've done. Lisa the First is the only game I've finished. Actually, no, that's not true. I did a uh, video game camp, and there's some dumb game about uh, Cowboys and Aliens. Swear to God, that was my idea first. But it was, it was uh, Cowboys and Aliens. You shoot your guns, you can do the splits to dodge bullets, and that's about that. Huh. I'd like yeah. to play that. Uh, it got, even... it's, come on. See, I knew well, while you were gone, I was talking about you and I was saying, I bet Austin's the kind of guy who like totally takes his own sprite artwork for granted and doesn't realize that it's um, got a mixture of playful and disturbing that really makes me happy. I knew you wouldn't think that you were good at the things you do. <laughs> oh, uh, of course. <laughs> Sermon, Vid Sermon, who is a big fan of... Uh, is that Danny B in your house? Do you, do you live with Danny B? The composer? Oh, did a man? Did a large man just walk by? Yeah, I thought it was Danny B. Danny Baranowski. Oh, no. He's a large bearded man. He's my brother. Don't. <laughs> Unprofessional. <laughs> Sorry. Usually my cat ends up destroying the entire oh, okay. show. Okay, all right. So that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, Vin yeah. Sermon asks, "What's your favorite Dismal Jester's pod toy bit ever?" Vin, Ser Vin Sermon. We should not no. talk about the oh. other show. Uh, I'm more curious about if you can give me. <laughs> Any, and the listeners, any hints about what the Dismal Jester's uh, okay. involvement? I know we have an island in your game. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, All right. So, I mean, you obviously get the formula. I, whether you want to call it a formula or not, it's Jim Sterling tries mm -hmm. to convince you to do terrible things, and then with laser precision, Conrad will make uh, quips here and there, and it's just it's a beautiful formula. I'm telling you, you guys are the Internet Three Stooges. It's great. Um Am I curly? So, my <laughs> no, well, okay. I mean, I can't put you into the categories of Mo, Larry, and Curly, but Shemp you represent. Shemp for life. <laughs> Shemp for life. Shemp is great. <laughs> it's just each one of you has your own unique dynamic, and it 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 has to be the three. Couldn't be one without the other. That's the way I see it. Um, and is that going to carry over into the game you're making? That's my goal. Yes, is I really want to embody the personalities. There might be some scenarios you guys have discussed that appear in the game. But um ultimately I just really want to capture the feeling, you know, like it's basically just like a Dismal Jester's podcast episode. That's kind of what I want in the uh it, all for the Dismal Island. Yeah. We are yeah, we don't deserve you. Thank you so much for paying <laughs> tribute to our oh, it's basically great. it's just us pooping. Mentally pooping out 
Yeah, and, stuff and that's that wasn't good enough for any of the other stuff we do. Just come. <laughs> and that's the best stuff is the the honesty. You know, honesty is is some of the greatest. You know, when when it's when it's interwoven into entertainment, well, I think honesty is is an amazing thing. That's yeah. um, before the show, I was thinking about why your game took off the way it did, and why sites like 4chan and and Reddit take off the way they do, and even when you're like revolted by what you're seeing, when you know that it's honest. Yeah. It makes it feel like you, you did something genuine with your time, something real Absolutely. with your time, instead yeah. of being fed stuff that you know was just created by the marketing team in order yeah. to try to make a shit of money. And that's why I hate video games. No, um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I, I really, that's the essence I want to give off is a real honesty to it and not just cookie cutter. Even if it's, you know, a new paint of code, it's still going to be the same same old thing. So that's oh, really sure, the sure. goal is, is to make is make something new. Thing. And do you yeah. go to 4chan and Reddit? Or have you been to those websites? I don't get. I'm not very good. I'm I'm only just now getting into social media and stuff. I have a Tumblr account and I absolutely love it. Some of the, just the stuff you see on there is is fantastic. And uh, there's like a Lisa following, uh, the, Lisa the first following, and man, it's 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 amazing. Some of the stuff you Some know people do. Some of the fan art doing. for Lisa the first is uh, beautiful. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah it 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 blows my mind. Like I I never knew. I never would have would have guessed. So yeah, the internet. It's um it's revealed that there are all these people that like all of these things they didn't feel like they could talk about before, but right. uh, they have a place to be open about it and and get to know yeah. what human beings are really like when uh, you stop being polite and start being real. Yes. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> X Kev X asks question at Austin. So Jim uh -huh. Sterling did a Let's Play of Lisa, yeah. demo, Lisa the Painful RPG, and did uh -huh. awesome voices for it, which gave a charm. Do you yeah. think that playing the game without voices will detract from the charm? And how much does it cost to get Jake Vert Kaufman to do your music? We haven't talked at all about Jake Kaufman. Uh, he's a wonderful guy. Um, yeah. He's doing some of the music. But you're doing some of the music too, is that right? Yes, I am. Yeah, Jake Jake is, is contributing... Uh, it's almost like a cameo appearance in a movie. He's just gonna throw a couple songs my way, um, and uh, yeah. So I mean, primarily I'm doing the soundtrack, but yeah, it's I. Uh, I mean, I'm super excited about that to see what he's gonna come up with. You know, hopefully a little. And he's not a money. We've had him on this show before, and he was very open about being like, yeah, if I just like something, then I yeah. just end up getting excited and writing music for them, and then I will like ask them to buy me a burrito or just ask them to like send me a Christmas card, and that's it. And, so that's and what to, I imagined Jake was doing. To sum it up, that's basically the situation we're in right now. So, yeah, oh, to answer Jake. that. What yeah, a wonderful yeah. guy. Um, so, voice acting. Do you feel like if you had the option to do Lisa with voice acting, to at least to be able to switch it on and off, would you would you want there to be voice acting in there? Uh, if there was, man, it would have to be some high-level actors because there are situations that are like very dire in the game and to deliver a believable I mean you'll totally ruin it if it's like oh no he's dead you know <laughs> it has to be genuine again back to honesty it has to be a genuine performance and I mean there's no way I could do that but with that said I do I'm looking into having like a, almost like a wind waker type thing where you talk to someone they'll give you a grunt or a, you know just yell of random weirdness at you so Awesome. Well, if you need I, I might need to. Yeah, I might need to talk to the dismal jesters about that, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, speak for me, and I, I think Jim, and I'm hoping Conrad that we would all do any sort of. <gasps> yeah, <gasps> it's exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Any of those you want, all day for free. Um, <laughs> Adam from Way Forward, who Conrad was telling me in one of our technical. Uh, technical difficulty breaks that Adam from Way Forward and Austin Ivan Smith from Way Forward might also be characters, or at least have their uh, images, their their likenesses. Yeah, absolutely. Is that correct? Yeah, I uh, they Adam's been su super helpful and just a really great guide towards me. So I think I might make a little surprise for him. But um, in, in the Kickstarter, there there was a tier to where you know you can have your character, whether you'd be, you know, level of importance depending on how much you pledge, but yeah, so th there's there's going to be a lot of uh, people. A lot of animals, too. People have a lot of pets that they want in the game, so that'll awesome. that'll happen, yeah. Oh, I never even thought about how animals would cope in the world of Lisa. Right, yeah. 
there. Are they are they gonna be okay? Like, uh, no? no, probably not. A lot of clothes and food. So, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, and there's always that um, everything you always wanted to know about sex, but were afraid to ask. Woody Allen movie. I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't, no. But oh, I gotta show. Uh, right after the show, I am sending you a clip of Gene Wilder's segment of that. Um, it's kind of it's kind of pre Lisa, but it's huh. Lisa flavored. In sure, my sure, absolutely. You get a kick out of it. Anyway, sorry. Adam from Way Forward says a world dominated by men and perverts and self indulgence is Lisa the Internet. <laughs> He's funny. We were talking a bit about that before, but yeah, if you want to speak to that. Uh, well, okay, so so we I we keep bringing it up, but uh it, the internet is a place where you can say the whatever you want, whatever dumb thing that comes to your mind, you can just say it to get a rise out of somebody or if you are being truly honest and genuine whatever. So, I mean, is it that the game is about the internet or is the game saying something about humanity? I don't know, you tell me, but uh mm. yeah, so yeah, I think he's onto something there. But then, if you dive a little deeper, it's like, well, I mean, the internet's not saying these things; it's human beings who are saying these things. So, sure. You know. But it, it does, like I was saying before, the, a game like this to find an audience, I think, speaks to the eye-opening that we've all had on the internet for the past mm-hmm. five or ten years or so, and mm-hmm. even just the the dawn of YouTube, which has only been around. Oh for yeah, it seems like it's been around forever. But if I go back to when I first started Destructoid in 2007, I couldn't put videos on YouTube back then. Right. Uh, doing yeah. videos was a completely different thing. Um, we found out what human beings are like and what they want to watch and also oh, yeah. who they are as people through the Internet. And they are much more like Lisa than uh, maybe I knew. Before. Right. I definitely you know, see some parallels. And it helps, too, that, I mean, I think of Kirby, you know, just constantly consuming, consuming. I think humans, we just constantly want to consume new information, media, whether it's music, movies, entertainment, and the internet is the best way to do that because it's just unfiltered, you don't have to invest, you know, like watch a story that's going to, you know, start here, arc there, finish there, it's just like, oh, I need to fill my mind with more dumb things so you can just go on the internet, so that helps too, <laughs> that it's like, oh, Lisa, this is uh, just another one of those dumb things that I could fill into my schedule, so <laughs> that, that kind of adds. spoke to, like, I've never seen anyone try to make a game like this before. Uh, sure. When I first saw Lisa, that's certainly what I thought. And I did think Walking Dead, and I did think fascination with not only who people are really are, but why they're willing to sink as low as they're willing to sink. And can I manage to be a hero in a world like that? Because when I play Lisa, I intend on trying to consider <laughs> I think, human life as much as I can. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that's just about everybody. Um, and that's what I love is because then I can trap so many people into doing things and then turn it on their heads because everyone wants to. I mean, because it's it's the idea of that, well, I have to do the right thing and I'll get the right reward or, you know, mm. so I hope I hope maybe next time you play a, a AAA game you'll think about what you do just because of the experience you had in Lisa. It's like, well, fuck it. Maybe I will let this person die. Who gives a shit? You know, just like whatever. <laughs> just, just see what happens. Yeah, I want you to be the agent of chaos. So. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes me all the more excited to play it. Uh, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Forward Resident asks, since Lisa is about loss, is it possible to lose too much and reach an early endgame? Is it possible to lose too much and not be able to win at all? Okay. Uh, maybe. <laughs> that, honestly, what that comes down to is just balancing the mechanics and stuff, which is something that, I mean, I don't want to sit here and incriminate myself, but I... In more in tune and and uh, I don't want to say skill that, but the the story elements and the the character development, all that sort of stuff is my main focus. Whereas mm-hmm. mechanics and and like the math and you know those sort of things is something that I need to tune as I go. But where it stands, I wouldn't want you to uh, not be able to beat it because of all the terrible things you did to yourself or others. But it will make things harder. Like for instance, if you lose both your arms. It takes you a lot longer to climb a rope, like like in in real time. It takes him longer to get up there, and you you know you lose a lot of your attacks and stuff. So, basically, if you do everything right, the game is kind of on like well, right. The game maybe will be kind of on like easy mode, sort mm-hmm. of thing. But if you if I take that back, I'm sorry. If you do all the mean selfish things, the game becomes easier. 
But the more you want to save and help, the much harder the game's going to be. So there's no, like, you can't pick a difficulty at the beginning, but depending on what you do in the game dictates dictates your uh, difficulty level. Huh. So, so yeah. yeah, much in, like, real life, from what I've noticed anyway, in my life, um, it is much easier to take the Absolutely. animalistic, selfish instinct, Absolutely. you know, just uh, yeah. get drunk and have sex with the ladies as opposed to being a uh, mm-hmm. monogamous, um, uh, you know, a man that a uh, strong man who doesn't give in to temptation. Yes, and that's just a truth in uh, you know humans. So it's a truth in Lisa too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I was gonna start singing my R and B song "Dingle It" because uh, those are the same lyrics. I don't know if you've heard that R and B song. Oh, right? uh, J Hey C H asks. For the music, did artists contact you, or did you contact them? Did you have a certain sound, feel, genre in mind straight away? Uh, we talked about that a little bit, but uh, from what I understood, you did the music. Yes, I've done. Jake, did Jake reach out to you, or did you reach out to? He him? reached out to me. No, I, I, I'm very new to the, you know, the, the development community and stuff. So a lot of people reached out to me, and it's great. I love it. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very thankful. Um, where it stands right now. He has yet to. Uh, we haven't worked on anything yet together. So right now everything's been by by me, and um, I'm really excited to have Jake because he's a musician. <laughs> I am just some guy <laughs> in my room with a computer. <laughs> you would say the same thing. He's just got a, a lot more experience of being that guy. Sure. Um, is Tingle gonna be in the game? Because I would like Tingle to be in the game, please. Tingle from Legend of Zelda. Tingle. Yeah, just put Tingle in there, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. No, I have. I'm, I'm scared. I have a lot of like cameos, and I don't. I need to look in like copyright laws and that sort of thing, parody laws and that stuff. But uh, there, there hopefully will be a lot of uh, you know, familiar faces, and you see how they how they fare in the in the future. <laughs> Can you give us a hint about what familiar um, faces? Are, are we well, there's. See, yeah. I, I love King of Fighters, so I know it doesn't make a lot of crossover in the RPG community, but yeah, there's gonna be a lot of King of Fighters characters. Um, maybe, what? yeah, <laughs> one, like one. Terry and yeah, and Terry Bogar, my favorite Brian Badler. I don't know if anyone, unless you know, he's the big American football player. He's like a he's character. In, he wasn't in KOF uh, twelve or thirteen, was he? No, he's been in like, he was in the first one. Uh, you know, he was on the American sports team. Um. I love that guy because everyone hates that guy. So that's <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, there's there'll be some people here and there, and a lot of times you won't be able to talk to them. You'll just see them get killed or murdered, or they'll do murdering or whatever. I, it, irony, you know, maybe a little irony in the in the situation. So we'll see. Huh? From what I know, you as long as you make it clear that it's not a um, an attempt to steal the character, that you are in fact making fun of the character. Like uh, I did a. Cartoon called Teenage Pokemon in yeah, the first episode. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in the first episode, one of the characters was wearing a Jake the Dog shirt from Adventure Time. Right. And they were like, "You need to get rid of that." And actually, Vid Sermon, who was uh, in the chat, he made a little sprite graphic of me originally with its penis uh, visible. And okay. Said, Can you remove the penis, and then I'll put that on the character to cover Jake the dog. It was like the last minute edit we had to do. Whereas I can just use Pokemon all I want. They're yeah. Not about that at all, because I'm making fun of Pokemon. Right. So if you make fun of Tingle by having him, oh well, I don't know, uh, run a brothel called uh, Tingle's Dingle It, <laughs> I could be there. Then Jonathan Holmes could show up and be like, oh, I'm just dressing up like Tingle for the day. Right. Um, yeah, of course, it's all up to oh. you. But I, I would love to see you render Tingle. Because uh, I feel like your art style is perfect for that character. Yeah, no, he would really. I think he'd fit in. He's a good character for that world. Yeah. <laughs> Did you play um, Minish Cap? I did. I honestly don't really remember much about it. You should go back to the just for the art because it's another. Oh no! The, yeah, the art was great. The art was great. But I mean, in terms of story, it's like yeah, you do six dungeons, uh, beat some new boss, and then you're done. So I, I don't remember a lot of that. But the art was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tingle's sprite in that is is probably yeah. his best sprite. Yeah. Uh, Sermon again. Hi, Sermon. And we should probably wrap up the show, kind of maybe, unless there's a there's a lot of stuff we might have missed. I should open that up before I do Sermon's question. Austin, is there anything that you were hoping we would definitely talk about? That we missed uh, because both the show started late and the technical problems we've had. Did we no. miss anything? I don't think so. I mean, you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, deal. Sermon asks, how do you think people will react to any rape that may happen in the game, may or may not happen, if there was to be 
sexual assault uh, between some of the characters. Oh, and we didn't talk at all about the buddy scenario that I'm so scared. I'm like, just looking at Buddy in her little oh, poncho yeah. makes me like pre terrified for how she's going to survive in the world yeah. of Lisa. So I'd want to take Sir Sermon's question first and then right. maybe talk I'll, a little bit I'll about try to be, uh, Yeah, I'll try to be quick. Um, I, am, I don't know if this is a blessing or a curse, but I really try my best to just not care about what anyone's going to think about the th <laughs> things that I do. So uh, there were some... Early on uh, in, in the game's conception, it was very dark, and I talked to people about it, and they're like, you you can't do that. Don't, m to make, <laughs> don't make a game like that. So things have kind of changed around. But, yeah, I really try my best to not let anyone sway. Uh, or I, I'm sorry. I try to make it so I don't think about what people are going to think. You know, I'll, I'll sure. just go ahead and, and do it because if I feel strongly about it. But if it is the kind of thing where like, oh well, there's a butt joke because butt jokes are funny, you know, for the sake of it, then it's like, yeah, now you're maybe being malicious or whatever. But, um, yeah, if if it's something that I think has a a nice, I don't want to say nice, it has a human element to it, and it's a real thing, then yeah, I'll absolutely not be afraid to do it. But if it's doing something for the sake of doing it, then or you know, being uh graphic or dark or whatever just so you're like yeah this is really dark people you know then nah don't do that so yeah if there's if there's an honesty to it then I'll just go for it yeah that makes sense and it's right. uh I would imagine that the things that you create you aren't going to be as disturbed by them maybe as somebody yeah. who's new to it that's one of the things that I think a lot of people have to watch out for both with their game design, with like yeah. difficulty and whatnot. They made it up, so when they play it, they know what to do. Whereas they hand it off to somebody else. I know Edmund McMillan and uh, Tommy uh, Ravenous had a huge problem with that with Super Meat Boy. They had to right. test the crap out of that because it was too hard, and still, pe still people think it's too hard. Yeah. And the same in, when it comes to disturbing content, you're not disturbed by the butt because you drew that little butt. You know it's right. a fake butt. You, yeah. You've got the file on your computer. When I see that butt, I'm like, real butt. Don't yeah. hurt that butt. Right, yeah. i um, disturbed if that butt gets hurt. Yeah, so again, just, just to finish up with that, or to whatever, finish that discussion. Um, yeah, I... I uh, the game's mean, dark, sad, and miserable, but I'm trying to make it at least somewhat logical that these things will... these dark, miserable things will go on, you know? Sure. So... Well, I, I would imagine you have to balance how deeply yeah. you're going to disturb people and Absolutely. how much you're going to... It's gonna. You don't want it to be distractingly disturbing to the point exactly. where they can't even take in the... the exactly. Pool. Absolutely, yeah. 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 I think I understood what I meant, probably. I got that it. Made sense. Yeah, <laughs> that's all that counts. And there is, thanks to the Kickstarter doing even better than you had initially asked, mm -hmm. there's the Dismal Jester's Island and there's also... Uh, buddy. scenario about the last woman, Buddy. Yeah. Is there anything you can tell us about that scenario? Because I'm very curious about it. Yeah. Um, I kind of dug myself into a hole, too, because uh, now my, my creative... Because I, I don't so much like... here. Because, again, I'm doing this myself, so I can do whatever I want, really. I have sure. the story outline, but I love being able to as I'm in the moment creating, and, and I think Adam Tierney talked about this when they were, you know, or, or I, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I've heard this from someone else, but just mm. being able to kind of switch things out uh, on a whim, and uh, well now it's like, well, now they have to play as buddies, so I'm keeping that element in, but um, yeah, I can't really say too much, but she's kind of, when you play as her is when you get to learn about everything, the back ground of the game, kind of where she came from and why she's there, you know? So it, it it may be a good or bad thing, depending on who's playing it, but, you know, a lot of uh, works, like Last of Us, they don't explain anything. They're just like, well, here's this girl, here's this guy, here's the characters, here's the story, now it's over. So through Buddy's perspective, you kind of get to see how everything happened, why she's there, why everyone else is there, why everything's falling apart, and uh, you learn a little bit about her, and you may see her do some really great things or some really bad things. I haven't decided yet, so huh. we'll but see. But she might have the option to do good or bad just as in the main campaign? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I was imagining the world wasn't as bad yet or else she would not have any sort of autonomy at all. 
Right. Uh, I imagine if she survives to the point of the main campaign, because it takes place a little bit before the main campaign, is that right? Uh, the buddy section? Yeah. Oh, no, that's at, that's at the very end of the game. Yeah, huh. She, she kind of wraps things up. <laughs> I wonder how she even survived then. Ah, uh, well, I don't know. She, she's out. fortunate. I, I can say this. She's fortunate enough to be with a group of people that are sound of mind and not, uh, you know, malicious. She, Brad, Brad kind of acts as her father, uh, but he's a drug addict and he has his own line of problems, so it doesn't really work. For people out who don't know, uh, who is Brad in the game? Brad is the main character. He is a bald, bearded man who is addicted to a drug called Joy. And uh, that's kind of how he gets through his days. So, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Have you seen uh, Children of Men? I have, yes. It's yeah. Neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um, <laughs> I guess we should wrap it up. Rats. I, uh, what a strange episode it's been. Yeah, I, I only... apologize. Oh, not your shit. fault. I can only question yeah. my, own <laughs> my own worth and whether. And it got dark where you are. This is great. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your time. Like Animal Crossing, that's okay. So yeah. um, they can follow you on Twitter. It's at Lisa the, the RPG. RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would thank you for saying that because I totally forgot. Yeah, I would love if you guys would follow me. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I generally don't post anything about the game though. It's usually just my thoughts on stupid things. So yeah. That's uh, come, come check it out. That's yeah. what, just like the show. People get to know you through that. And uh, when do you think the game will be done? What's your best guess? I think I will finish creating the game. Um, in May, that's the goal. But um, as, in terms of having it be ready and playable for people, I don't know. I, I I think this game is going to require a lot of testing and balancing and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, I, and hopefully I'll have a demo out soon and that'll hold people over. So we'll see. Ah, exciting! Oh, and the T-shirts. I think I got the pervert one. Okay. Yeah. Great. No, that's that's coming too, Kickstarter guys out there. Uh, uh, so just just stay tuned for all that stuff. Yeah. Ha, ah, exciting. Uh, and uh, they can check out more about the game on the Kickstarter page and also has its own website that has some nipply Mario Brothers. On. Yeah, you, if you go to dinglinggames.com, you can um, pre-order the game and you know look at some info, and there's a middle finger on that website too for you too, so there you go. <laughs> I think at one point yeah, on one of the websites, there's an image of a man... He's either got a fishnet stockings or a mesh tank top, and he's shaking his hips. And I think it says, "Are like, are you proud of me now, Dad?" Are you proud of me now, Dad? Yeah, that's what well, that's what he says after you kill him. So, <laughs> is your dad that. proud of you? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> no, I'm proud of you. That's I'm all sure he is. Yeah, I can yeah. be your new bald dad. Okay, uh, awesome. Well, that's for me. I'm at Tron Knots on Twitter. The show can be watched later on Destructoid's YouTube page, Detoid, uh, on YouTube. And uh, there's, jeez, 90-something episodes now, so you can really fill your life with getting to know video game developers if you want. Yeah. You can also listen to it later on iTunes. Just Google iTunes, Subhomes, so many episodes. Jeez, can't believe it. We've got it's more episodes jump. to come. Pretty soon we've got Jane Jensen, who wrote a lot of the King's Quest games. We've cool. got the guys who did Kentucky Route Zero. We've got a lot of great guests coming up soon, so that'll be fun. Uh, that's it for me, and Sinistar knows to end the show, and we both wave goodbye. So, Austin, oh. if you would, so long. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye-bye.